Hello and welcome to this special program. We're exploring the green cities around the world. Now, cities bear the brunt of the climate crisis, but the good news now is unprecedented actions are taken at sub-national levels, especially at city levels. That's why we'll be having a conversation with mayors from around the world. Beyond the city limits, a global green alliance is flexing its muscles. Meet C40, a global network uniting the world's leading mayors in the fight against the climate crisis. Let's hear from C40's executive director, Mark Watts, sharing with us the alliance's green credentials and initiatives. So we have the biggest cities in China, the biggest cities in the United States, in Europe, uh, in Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia. Primarily what we do is we bring the leaders of those cities, both the mayors, the politicians and the technical uh, leaders together so that they can learn from each other and so go much faster. So they don't have to work out how to develop a low emission zone for the city to reduce emissions from traffic because London's already been pioneering this for 20 years and can share its experience so that many other cities uh, can copy it. But we also create um, a platform for those local leaders so that they can inter influence the intergovernmental, the, the broader international debate on climate. Because what we see actually is these, these major cities, they're a quarter of global GDP is produced in them just within our 100 members, about 800 million people. But they're reducing carbon emissions much faster than their respective nation states in most instances. So 75% of our member cities are cutting their emissions faster than their respective national governments. And for this episode, we're in Chengdu, where we'll be having a dialogue with Wang Zhihua, deputy mayor of the city. He knows a thing or two about climate change, and in fact, he has dedicated much of his adult life to the cause of the environment. We'll be learning more about how this southwestern Chinese megacity going green. Mayor Wang, Chengdu is a member of C40. Uh, that is a group incorporating 98 cities around the world to fight climate change. What did Chengdu learn from the rest of the world, and what did Chengdu offer to the rest of the world? 呃成都呢啊作为C40成城的一员呢呃在C40企业領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領領
传说中的空中花园。这个空中花园这个想法是怎么来的呢？像我们作为一个老城区，我们要圆我们的公园梦啊，只有在我们的城市空间当中挖潜。嗯，像我们的老城区就有很多闲置的这样的楼顶空间啊、嗯，如果把它们都利用起来，打造成我们的公园花园的话，这无疑啊呢，将给我们居民圆了一个公园梦。这个我看这些草。这些草其实也是挺不一般的，是不是？感觉看上去，嗯、呃，非常的整齐。这个是我们跟四川农科院合作开发的一个全新的草种，扎根只有三厘米，它不但呀、啊、不破坏防水，而且它是免维护的，只要树叶掉了，就可以又扎根长起一个新的植被。所以啊，我们要一次性打造，减少我们的维护成本，这能才能在城市当中啊进行大面积的铺开。真的，这背后其实都是科技，表面上看不出来啊。我们的邻居们，我们住在这儿的这些居民们是什么反应？他们怎么看这个空中花园？大家非常的这个爱惜我们的这个空中花园，因为公园不仅仅是一个生态环境，最重要的就是公众的参与，共建共享美好家园。呃，真的，嗯，非常的好。我有时上来看看花、啊，和朋友聊聊天啊那些。早晨起来就来锻炼好嘛，除好草啊。Before Park City transformed our communities, graying spaces were distant echoes on city outskirts. Chengdu redefined the story, integrating parks into the urban fabric. It's not been all roses along the way, and it took time to turn Chengdu's city space into hues of gray and green. You've been here for what a year so far. On what have been some of the most thorny challenges? 最大的挑战呢，我是觉得，呃，首先是观念的调整。全社会都认同、推动啊，公园城市示范建设这个理念，并付诸行动，才是我们最大的呃动力，也是最大的难点。呃，一个应对气候变化、一个绿色低碳发展的社会，一定是这个有党委的领导啊、政府的主导啊，但是企业、社会公众组织共同参与这件事情，才能够形成真正的合力。Um, when it comes to carving out a unique low carbon path for this city of twenty to a million, around twenty two million residents,、um, how did you go about doing that? 我们一共。规划、推动、打造二十四个近零碳小区的一个试点工作，其中有十个就是居民的社区，二十几个近零碳社区的建设里，里面包括了呃工业企业啊、公共机构啊、呃工业园区啊和景区，呃，难能可贵的十个啊，这个居民社区更体现了呃普通市民对于这件事情的支持和响应，呃，激发了他们的积极性和创造性。在这个近邻看社区建设中，有很多难能可贵的经验、办法和措施，这也是我们，呃，能够全社会推广的最大的支持。你包括比如说，有机生活垃圾的处理，啊，这是最简单的啊。这个社区采取一些，呃，绿色低碳的技术啊，小型化，啊，便捷化、就地化的一些处理，呃，所以这个社区的最高的时候，它百分之八十的这种日常生活的有机垃圾都可以就就地处置，然后。产生了一些这个呃低碳的有机肥料，也可以居民免费使用啊，这样积极性就充分调动起来了。啊，这就是我们的有机垃圾处置中心了。所以，我们居民呢，首先呢，会把垃圾拿到这个地方来。我们这个有秤，可以进行称重。我们这儿有专门的志愿者呢，对每一家称重呢，都会进行一个登记。登记了之后呢，是有积分的。可以兑换我们各种的物资，居民呢非常的这个喜欢。嗯，通过这个设备啊，七十二个小时就可以转化成为我们的肥料，就像这样的肥料。哎，对，这个就是我们有机垃圾的这个肥料了，啊、呃，这个没有任何臭味的，而且呢，这个、这个、可以证证明。而且呢，这个肥料啊，种花是非常的好的，嗯，居民呢非常的抢手。过去啊，这个地方就是小区的垃圾房，在小区就地处置啊，就避免了垃圾啊再运到城市中。而我们处置这样一吨垃圾的成本，跟我们运输一吨垃圾到焚烧站焚烧的成本，其实基本是一样的。我们这一台设备呢，一年就能处置三百吨的垃圾。过去啊，我们的城市垃圾车要运三车每天运走这个小区的垃圾，现在只用运一车了，因为有两车的垃圾，他们就地就处置了。In this small community, waste is turned into fertilizer. It might seem like a small step in the vast green landscape of a mega city, but let me tell you. It is a giant leap for a planet that is grappling with a deep crisis. Climate change is not some far-off concept. It is right here with us, 
felt in every season. Beijing suffered the worst flooding in the past 70 years this summer. And actually this year, 2023, is the hottest year ever recorded for Northern Hemisphere. Uh, what do you make of all this? What does all this say about the urgency of climate change? Uh, 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 uh uh We know that taking climate efforts is as complicated as it is complex for this mega city of uh, Chengdu. It has to take into account so many factors, right? When you think about economic growth that has to be sustained at a certain level so that there can be enough jobs created, especially for the younger population. So how does social, economic, and financial factors coming into this equation when it comes to Chengdu's efforts to fight climate change? Chengdu <laughs> 号召积极发展绿色低碳的产业 相对而言是逐步向绿色地带发展在迈进 Across the Eurasian continent, Heidelberg in Germany is also committed to a zero-carbon future. Bolstered by a rich tradition of environmental initiatives, Heidelberg made history in 1992 as the first German city to implement a citywide climate protection concept. Today, we're honored to have Dr. Edgard Wusner, the mayor of Heidelberg, to join us in this great conversation. He will share his insights into the city's innovative approaches and their profound impacts on fostering a greener and more vibrant community. Okay, Dr. Worsner, welcome to the program on CGTN. Hello, wonderful meeting you. Greetings from Heidelberg. Let's talk about your wonderful city, um, Heidelberg, Germany. It has so many titles under its belt. Can you tell us about this uh, green transition, uh, which is multifaceted, of course? And let me ask you, first of all, about this passive housing project, which is one of the largest in the world. What is a passive housing, and how did Heidelberg build it? Yeah, you have to know that Heidelberg is, um, is, a, is a wonderful, as you can see, a wonderful historic university town. Our, our biggest treasure is knowledge. And if you have the knowledge, for example, to build super efficient buildings like passive houses, which needed 
about 1.5 liter per square meter and year oil instead of 15 or 20. It shows the gap between the technical potential and that's what normally a regular building standard is. And what we wanted to achieve in Heidelberg is use the knowledge, create a better perspective for your citizens, create a better life for your citizens, and this will also cause the global, in, in a global dimension, uh, the global change uh, question, because if you are acting on the local level, you can show best practice example, and that's exactly what the citizens wanted to see from us. You have been mayor of Heidelberg for nearly two decades. Uh, I still want to get your a sense on how you pulled it off in terms of building this passive housing project, which is the largest in the world. Uh, to many average viewers who might not be terribly familiar with what a passive housing is, uh, can you tell us um, how did you guys build it? The, the big discussion we had was uh, you, you have a technical solution but uh, the national standard is much too weak. And what we have done was uh, we owned the whole area which we wanted to develop. So we're becoming one of the biggest landlords uh, in our region. And then we decided, okay, if you want to buy any piece of land here, you want to build a house there, a retail shop, a sports gym or uh, medical institute, whatever, you have to accept the Heidelberg politically decision uh, um, standard, which is the passive house standard. And by doing so, we could achieve that every building is has to use the standards. Also, if it's much, much, much lower than the national standard. At the beginning, we had a huge discussion, oh, it's too expensive, you can't pay it, but no, the people uh, learn very quickly that you reduce the energy demand so rapidly that you save so much money that it's absolutely also economically a very, uh, it makes very much uh, sense to use this higher standard in the midterm and long term strategy. Um, for a free yeah. market democracy like Germany, was there resistance in the beginning? Some might say, oh, this is undemocratic, this is anti free market. Um, were there voices like that back in the day? Absolutely. That's that's all the whole range you had. We had at the beginning no Heidelberg building company who wants to accept this building standard because they said it's much too expensive. But uh, we get a lot of people attracted uh, who understand that this standard is uh, is the game changer uh, in in setting up future oriented city areas. And by doing so, bringing also external people here to Heidelberg, and they love Heidelberg, they find it a great concept, a great strategy, uh, which wanted to support this city of uh, a walking distance. You can achieve everything, uh, bicycle city, tram lines in the city, green areas around this new city area, and. Uh, uh, reduction of the climate emissions of this city area by more than 85 percent that this is a future concept and over the years now everybody is a great fan of uh, such a structure but at the beginning it was not easy it was heavily we had a lot of political discussions but uh, those who have uh, the knowledge in our city also our political board decided, no, we wanted to get a step further in developing this uh, city for the next generations. Heidelberg is well connected, is considered a major transportation hub. And uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about, um, under your administration, how did Heidelberg make the very city more walkable and more cyclable, reducing the carbon footprint? The first thing is you have to attract the downtown areas. Uh, as pedestrian areas. The second step is uh, you always have to define a mixture. So not a city area where the people are working and a city area where the people are sleeping. So you have a lot of transportation need. This is not a future concept. So we wanted to have a walking distance city, a, a urban city where you have everything on in one area. 
So uh, the new city areas, they have mostly in the center, uh, campus, university campus areas, uh, small and medium enterprises, parks, pubs, and residential area. So it's a mixture. Second step, you have to expand your mass transport system so trams and buses and on the other hand uh, if you do so you also have to take into account that bicycle driving is the cheapest uh, environmental friendliest way of also not only short distance which was in the past the situation also in the medium distances because by using more and more electric bikes uh, it becomes really a bigger movement also for medium and long-term distances so that you can commute over five, ten kilometer to downtown area or uh, three, four kilometer very easily by uh, using bikes and by expanding the bike lanes. So also bike highway lanes to the downtown area we achieved that in Heidelberg, about 80% of the citizens are not using cars anymore. On the larger question of the role of government, um, uh, Mayor Dr. Wusner, I want to ask you about this fine line between you know, a policy and uh, unleashing the full potential of the free market. Um, what are you doing on one hand in implementing all the standards and regulations, and on the other hand, um, trying to perhaps uh, harness the energy of the free market, engaging with NGOs and enterprises. Now, I think uh, you won't achieve your goals if you're not integrating the enterprises. Uh, uh, I'm a great friend of uh, open doors. In many or in mostly every part, you have a wonderful technical solution, which it's a game changer. But the technical solution is not implemented because at the beginning it's mostly a little bit more expensive or it's a little bit more unknown technic. So uh, craft and trade chambers are not so convinced with this technology. They have to be trained. They have to be, uh, yeah, work together with these new technical solutions. That's what we're doing. So we have huge, not only awareness campaigns, we have also advice teams outside who practice, who train together with the enterprises, the new product lines and in the new tools. And by doing so, you can change a lot. You can integrate the new enterprises. You can use private capital money, which is absolutely needed to implement lots of those new solutions. And by doing so, you really achieve that the economic development of your city, the social dimension and the environmental dimension is really equally uh, combined in this new future concept. Uh, can you perhaps give us mm. one most striking story about this multi-benefits uh, that the green yeah. transition is bringing to the residents of yeah. Heidelberg? You have lots of schools, but you have just a small administration unit who is trying to make the retrofitting program for the schools. And you have also uh, package of money, uh, which is mostly not enough to renovate all the buildings and all the heating systems. So by bringing in private uh, companies, uh, giving them a revenue for one, two years, they will make the renovation, the retrofitting in your existing buildings, for example, your school building, they implement a new heating system, they make the renovation. Uh, we make a contract for five years Two years more is the revenue for the uh, private company, but therefore I don't need so much money in, uh, uh, in my administration. I can uh, run those programs with a smaller number of, in the administration. And uh, it's a game changer because in a very short period of time, I really can achieve my goal to reduce the energy demand, for example, of all schools and kindergartens in Heidelberg. And by running this program, we have reduced in less uh, than 10 years, more than 50% of the total demand of energy for all schools and kindergartens in Heidelberg. So climate implementation strategy means quicker uh, achieving your goals uh, and it's economically rentable for lots of companies creates business and creates uh, employment. So 
So it has a social dimension and it's also climate friendly. Mayor Usner, our program features mayors from around the world, uh, particularly the C40 mayors, uh, of which uh, Heidelberg is a part of. Um, what do you want to say to your fellow mayors, uh, municipal leaders around the world, especially when it comes to the experiences of a green transition and the lessons learned along the way? Yeah, I think we can learn a lot from each other. So therefore, this exchange of our experiences is one of the leading points. The second point is that our voices are heard on the national and supranational louder. So for, uh, for the G7 process, for example, uh, in Europe and with Canada, US and Japan, uh, we're working now in a U seven process so that also cities can take over here in this process a leading position that we are part of the cop meetings that we implement not only our ideas our solutions uh, into these uh, political papers and then we achieve these uh, goals much easier that was the result of paris where we brought in a lot of energy uh, by bloomberg a lot of uh, Annie Hidalgo and many other mayors from the C40 uh, group who said, yes, we can do this. We wanted to achieve uh, these goals and we have to achieve these goals. So please use our tools, what we have already implemented uh, in cities here and there. Uh, finally, what are your thoughts on uh, the progress of China, especially at municipal levels, uh, when it comes to decarbonizing the Chinese society, the Chinese cities? I'm always very impressed because uh, at the beginning, uh, 15 years ago, it was uh, a lot of discussion what China can learn from Europe or from Heidelberg or whatever. Uh, but this has changed. Uh, China is very active in the climate uh, policy and strategy. China is taking over lead position of implementing uh, huge megawatt uh, power plants in the field of renewables uh, is taking over a lead in the production line, uh, is taking over a lead in, in new product lines. When I think about uh, new fuel technologies like uh, hydrogen, uh, but uh, I am very much interested that we all uh, participate in this process, not just one country. It's a process where every country has to use very easily these new technology can get a very easy uh, way to use it also in a cheaper way uh, to use it in a much higher demand. So China is a great example today. Dr. Wurzner, Mayor of Heidelberg, Germany, thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That will do it for this special program. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Mang Guan, and I'll see you again soon.